Okay, here we go. Second one. Um, and I may change the order of this because I was just thinking I should probably do an update or um, a little info session on getting paperwork done and how you can move to the EU at all when you're an American citizen because it's not easy. Um, let me see. Okay, so this update is about once you get to the country um, and the first year there and, and different things to think about. One, pay attention to your health. Um, anytime you move anywhere, really, you should be noticing that things are different. Your allergies are going to be different. Speaking of which, I'm complete. I've never had allergies in my life, um, and suddenly in Liguria, allergies galore. Especially this time of year, right now and during the summer. Um, but I only know that because I learned that you just have to you have to write things down because first of all you're just never going to remember it. Um, so if something is not right with you health wise or you feel like I've never been through this before, you should write it down. Um, I lived in London for a year with a vitamin D deficiency, and I thought the whole time that it was just me missing America and whatever. But I had never experienced depression before. I had no idea what was going on. And all I needed was more sun or more vitamin D. And as soon as I started taking pills, um, well, pills, you know, um, vitamin supplements, everything got so much better suddenly. Um, and so sometimes it's not just you're having a bad time transitioning. Sometimes there's things wrong with your health. So um, keep, rep keep records of things. Um, expect things to be different than they are. Um, you know, my husband's allergic to the mosquitoes here. Never had any problems with bugs or anything serious before, but he's allergic to the mosquitoes in this area. I'm allergic to the pollen or something, um, etc. So it will make your life a lot easier if you know um, what's going on. And especially in the beginning, um, things are going to be really wacky with your health um, if you move overseas because your diet changes a lot. And, um, and, Anyways, when you change your diet and you're changing your body clock, things are going to be like completely out of sorts for maybe a year, um, sometimes a little bit longer than that. I think especially for women. Okay, so pay attention to your health. Um, and da -da 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 -da, what else? If you're having a bad time, if things are going really rough, just push through it um, because there are things that are impossible to do. Um, sometimes you're going to get some, you know, like you might get problems with companies or you might be trying to, to get a bank account open or something and it just seems like completely impossible. Don't focus too much on it. Don't get overwhelmed by it. Just tell yourself, just got to get through it and do what you have to do and just deal with it. Um, we've, we've had, we've been ripped off so many times, um, and we've gotten all sorts of things here in Italy, but you know what, at the end of the day, I just paid the money and got them out of my life because I just, you know, like after a year of something, if it's still going on and, and you're just like, this is not getting anywhere, you know, figure out what you want to do about it and just do it. Um, because if you if you make it like a focus or if you're constantly thinking about it and worrying about it, you are going to go insane. Um, so um, try not to focus on the, the rough patches or things that are not working out really well. Um, and just go through all the hoops that you have to go through to get things done. But don't take things too seriously and laugh about it. Because if you can't laugh about it, you're just going to break. Um, so it's either a breakdown or just a, ha, 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 these people are crazy. <sighs> um, anyways, okay. Um, let me see. When, especially when you first um, get to the place, find things that you really like about it. Um, if, you, if you find a good restaurant, go there and keep repeating it. Um, if you find uh, some sort of food or something that you like there um, that you can't that you've never had before or something keep repeating it um, anything that you really enjoy doing um, individually or with your spouse or whatever 
Um, and I think especially with your spouse, actually, if you're married, or with your um, family and kids, I would think, um, re keep repeating it because um, it will it will sort of tie you to where you're at because you'll start thinking, well, maybe, you know, maybe this isn't for us, maybe we should go back home. But, you know, you, you do want an, a balance of things and you're not going to have much of a balance in the first year. You're just going to be thinking, this is too hard, this is really hard, I don't know if this is worth it. Um, but if you have those things that you can say, but look, there, you know, um, there's this restaurant that we really like here, or there's this thing that we really like to get there that we can't get at home. The kids really like this about it. My spouse really loves this about it. Um, then you can start balancing things out a little bit more. Um, but if, if all you're constantly thinking about is all the problems that you're having and everything that's difficult, you're just going to be out of here in, you know, six, seven months maybe at tops. <laughs> if you're just constantly focusing on everything that's driving you crazy, which is really, really easy to do. And I think it's possibly easier to do for women because women get a little bit, you know, um, I don't know, crazy about the details. And it's the details that are different and it's the details that are hard. So, um, anyways, um, just keep keep repeating things that, that go really well for, for your family um, and make get, get yourself some routines. And, um, and it helps a lot if you can get routines and get things um, moving along as smoothly as possible. Um, I mean, they, they say it's really good for, for a wife to, um, to make her home a haven, um, both for her and for her husband, I think, um, and her family in general. But it takes a long time um, when you're living abroad to find things because I mean presumably a lot of people don't move with all their furniture they don't move with all their um, decor so a lot of people just come with you know a couple of bags and and that's it and they, you really do just have to start all over um, so don't don't be too hard on yourself if you're trying to build a home um, give yourself a lot of time because it takes money and if you're doing something like teaching English it's going to take a long time because it's not like you're making loads of extra money to uh, to focus on decor. <laughs> um, I don't know if teaching English is is um, is a great job to have for you know building a home for a family. But um, anyways, uh, it takes time. Just give it time. Do what you can with what you have. Find um, little cheap things. Uh, get your family to send you little decor items. Um, because it will make you feel a lot better if you're not looking at bare walls, if you're not um, feeling like I'm in this crazy place, I don't know what's going on, and even when I go home, I don't feel at home. So um, try to focus on making your home yours um, as much as possible if you're not moving around too much. I know when, you, when you're first starting out, you might move into an apartment and you might be like, oh, this is awful, we have to move. And then you don't want to put a lot into it. Um, but as I say, do what you can because when you're getting through it, you still need to feel um, like when you come to your home that, you know, it's a place where your family can rest and you can rest and get a break from the pressure that you're under outside of your home. Um, let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, um, another thing is that a lot of people will just expect you to, um, as soon as you move, that you're just supposed to adjust immediately, um, and they'll think that you're going to cook as though you live in, have always lived in this country. Um, they'll, you know, people will say things like, oh, just go the, the European way and throw out your American stuff and, and cook this way or, or do it this way. But, and, and you might meet a lot of people who are doing that, like expats, if you meet expats. Um, that have been there for like four years, five years to 20 years, um, they're all going to be cooking completely differently. They're all going to be living a completely different life than you're ready to live. Um, and I don't think you should put that sort of pressure on yourself in the first few years um, because it's too much. You can't suddenly change everything that you've, you know, learned. You can't just become a different cook overnight and run your house completely differently. Um, so, you know, give it time. Um, in the first few years, you know, you might you might basically do cook as much as you've been doing at your own home in America or wherever, and do things that you normally do. Try to find what you can find because you're not going to be able to find everything, but find the things that you can cook, 
cook those or in any case fight you know in anything that you're doing but cooking is a really good example because cooking will change like drastically um, <clears throat> find what you can do things the way that you normally do them and it will give you like um, something to sort of cling on to for a bit and you'll feel like okay I can do this um, and then over time take what you want from wherever you're at if you're in England or something take um, take the things that you like from them and use them in your home and take the things that you like or that you're learning and use them but you don't have to suddenly overnight change everything and become English or something or become Dutch it's ridiculous you're, it's just not gonna happen so don't put that kind of pressure on yourself and don't think oh I should just throw this all away and stop trying to do it the American way I should do it their way and, and then it will work because it won't work that way either um, you know, you have to find some sort of balance and some sort of mix. And actually, after after about a, a few years, um, it really becomes one of the best things about living in another country um, because you start when you when you distance yourself from your own country, you start realizing that a lot of um, what you do and how you react to things and um, and how you are and who you are um, is really dependent on the culture that you come from. And, um, and you get to question a lot of that and you get to say, do I really like that? Do I really, do I really want to be like that? Or do I want to be like something else? Do I, do, you know, um, and you get to sort of separate out where you're living and where you have lived and, um, and you get to find the good things and the bad things about them. Um, and you can just, it's like picking and choosing. If, if you think, well, um, you know, I've been living my whole life like this and now I suddenly can see that you know there's something lacking there or um, or there's something that um, is half informed well then you don't have to keep it and suddenly you can be um, slightly different and in, in a way it means that you're always kind of going to be on the fringe um, because uh, if you don't become all English or all Italian or whatever if you don't make that your identity um, which I would suggest you don't, because if, if your identity is your nationality, um, there's always going to be something missing. Um, but if if that's your main defining factor, as I say, when you if you try to ever move abroad, you're not going to be able to handle it. You're going to completely lose yourself, and um, and and whatever. But um, also, if you just change it, oh, my husband's being sweet. Um, uh, if you just change it, then um, I don't know, you're going to be lacking some things as well because I don't think any culture has all the answers. Um, and the per obviously, there's no culture that has, um, ha has things down perfectly. Um, and there's strength. It's kind of like cultures are, are slightly like people, um, in that, I think, in that they all have strengths and weaknesses. And I think even spiritually, they have strengths and weaknesses. Um, and, and it's really nice to be able to pick and choose and, um, and to um, step back and see things clearly. But I think unless you actually pull yourself out of a culture, it's really hard to step back. I mean, I don't know if you can do it by just traveling. I don't, I'm not sure that you can unless you travel like all the time, constantly for a really extended period of time. Um, and um, anyway, so that's, that's one of our favorite things. Um, is is looking at stereotypes and and seeing you know thinking about why they are that way and and looking back at myself and thinking I told Dorian just the other day we were walking by a grocery store and, and there were these um, they have small carts in Europe um, well I say that but actually Americans just have oversized ridiculous carts at their um, at Walmart's and at their grocery stores which is another way to look at it I suppose um, and um, and I said. You know, I thought those things were so cute. The first time I saw one was in Poland. And, um, and I took a picture of it because I thought it was so cute. And I said, I was that American. I was definitely that American. And he just laughed at me. But, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you don't realize how other people are viewing you until you're um, not inside of, you know, until you're outside of something or on the fringe. You don't know what's, um, how other people are looking at you. But, but there's something nice about knowing... Um, you know how how people are seeing seeing you, and I think Americans often and and actually I think a lot of people are not aware unless you travel a lot and are well traveled um, how people are, are viewing you, um, because they're most people when they're traveling are not paying attention to the people around them. They're just thinking I'm here to um, 
get what I want basically from the culture. I'm here to take my pictures and have a good time. Um, but they're not paying much attention to the people around them. And actually we were in a restaurant, um, oh gosh, it was like um, maybe a year ago, and there was this table of Americans. And I was sitting with friends and we were having dinner and whatever. And these Americans, I don't, I, I suppose, I'm guessing, I'm just guessing, but I bet the waiter said something in English. And suddenly the whole table started cheering like out loud in a restaurant. And I was like cringing on the inside. I felt so embarrassed. I was like, and I was like, oh my gosh, they're Americans. I'm so embarrassed. And you know, I can't explain to you why, if you don't understand why I would cringe at that. Um, but you, if you, if you lived in Europe for like four years, I think you would, you would understand. It's because, you know, like everybody suddenly, everybody in the restaurant is looking at them and they don't even realize it. They don't realize that they are being completely inappropriate and everybody knows it except for them. And I think it's that like unawareness of other people that really just makes you go, uh, uh. <laughs> like, oh no, you know, um, anyways. So that's one of, that's one of my favorite things I think is to, um, is to not be that way anymore and there are lots of other smaller things that um, that we like that we can pick and choose I mean um, I don't have to watch American football anymore ever again <sighs> yes I get to watch rugby which is what I much prefer um, unfortunately I did have to take on the cricket thing um, and actually there's a cricket game going on right now so I mean like that's the thing you, you get to pick and choose and your spouse gets to pick and choose too so you sort of have to go along with it but um, anyways uh, there's um, there's a lot to be to be said for that I think and there's a lot of growth to be had uh, when you sort of let yourself go uh, culturally culturally speaking I guess I don't really know what that means but um, I guess when you um, when you start really discovering who you are and um, and sort of throwing out the the stuff that you don't want and taking on new things that you want etc so anyways um, this is really long already so I will cut it short. And I hope that you're enjoying it. Bye.